Barry Waxman is the Chief Growth Officer for RGA. He helps define the overall strategy and vision for the agency. He's rightfully considered a thought leader in the industry, so I wanted to get his point of view of digital today. So, um, Barry, do you think that the internet is changing human condition? Absolutely. Yeah, I, this is something I talk about a lot, actually, in my speeches and whatnot. Not only is it changing the human condition, but it's probably changing it like faster than just about anything because of the pace by which technology gets adopted. Yeah. So I think about things like Google and how many people use that every day and the fact that it didn't exist like 12 years ago. I'm not even quite sure exactly when Google was founded, but it seems yeah. like it was around 98, 99, somewhere around there. And it's not just the fact that people use it, but what they have access to is something that never existed in human history. It's pretty much the compendium of almost all human knowledge like yeah. in one place. Uh, that's just one example, I and mean, we can just go on and on and on. What's your point of view about the importance of curation? Do you think it's important well, to your online experience? It's, uh, it's important when it, uh, online, the thing about digital that is so different from any other media that was ever invented is that me, uh, digital represents a uh, profusion of contexts, as we often say at RGA. There's only one context for television. You, you watch it. It's like a single purpose device. There's only one context of magazines is that you read them. And the context of advertising in those, uh, in those worlds was always the same. It's always about interruption. It's the only yeah. context in which anyone ever sees ads is that they somehow interrupt us from the flow. When digital came along, uh, we couldn't take that same paradigm, the idea that media represents the singular context, and apply it to digital because it represents infinitely many contexts. So uh, there are some contexts of digital that are, uh, that are purely about buying stuff. You know, there are other contexts that are about uh, about uh, me creating content to share with, with my community somehow. And there are other contexts where I think digital has been really good, where there's been really great people that curate and develop great content uh, that's curated. And I think Huffington Post, which I know you guys acquired recently, is an example of a nice curated experience yeah. uh, where they're, you know, Ariana put together an amazing group of people who are great writers. Yeah. So in that sense, it can go infinitely many directions. And I do think that there is a place uh, in the world for things that are very curated. So given that though, so what's the most exciting thing you're seeing on, online at the moment? I'm not really spending that much time online. I, I, I spend more of my time on Imagine mobile devices. That. Yeah, mm. I've moved where I think I have formed habits online. There's certain things that I rely on like continually that I spend a lot of time on, but more and more of my media habits have gone into mobile devices. And so I'm spending more and more time in that world. I, I actually think that uh, that the move into mobile is starting to reinvent even some old media because my enjoyment of the New York Times went up a lot when I got an iPad Yeah. because their app I think is pretty good and I can read almost the whole newspaper that way and I don't miss the print version and I, I think I end up consuming more content from it than I did. It's more immersive, isn't it? Yeah, I guess it's no different than the website. I mean, the website and the iPad app have the same things, but there's something about this like touching and swiping and uh, that it just feels easier for me to, to do than clicking with a mouse and like navigating through the, the very formal structure of, of the web that I don't think ever lended itself well to like newspapers. But I do think these pads are unlocking potentially magazines, newspapers, etc. So maybe old media will reinvent through, through this, uh, mm. this new device. Let me see if I can ask you a, a tricky one perhaps. Uh, do you think technology is helping people act local or is it still global? Well, absolutely. I mean, look at these revolutions. <laughs> There's, it's like almost axiomatic that, uh, that it, it has uh, given people the ability to organize things locally. Um, I think the promise of stuff like Foursquare, which might create more local kind of things, yeah. is not quite there yet. I think it would be if uh, just a few more of my friends were like on it and we actually used it more habitually. And I almost feel like Foursquare needs to be automated. Like there needs to be like an NFC chip in my phone and there needs to be some sort of a, a transmitter at the entrance to the restaurant or whatever, or, or the club or the bar or, the, or even my workplace where it just automatically checks me in wherever mm. I go. Because if I have to actually manually do it, I'm just less apt to do it um, as time goes on. But I, you know, I think things like that could create uh, you know, more kinds of local connections. That was certainly the promise originally. I don't know whether it's really fulfilled that way. I think people got more into the badges and the social currency than they did that this is going to be a tool that I'll be able to find out where everyone is, you know, at night while I'm on the go or whatever. But I do think that, uh, that we will get there uh, in like the next version of whatever these things are that might be the more automated, <laughs> yeah. uh, the more automated kind. Indeed. So. I think that's awesome. Yeah, I think I'm good with that. Okay, that's cool. Perfect.